Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. Uh, this is produced by Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Please go online to pathwaytoparadise.org. Uh, follow the links for Deeper. You can listen to this episode, all previous episodes. And uh, you can also find links to our study notes and teacher helps if you are teaching the lesson or simply want to uh, be prepared for the lesson. Uh, we hope that you will find these materials uh, to be of help to you. Joining me today is uh, David. And um, let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to study together through the marvels of technology. Uh, we can record this from different locations and we can all listen no matter where we are in the world. It's amazing. So we thank you for this. Uh, but Lord, technology doesn't change hearts. Your Holy Spirit does. And so we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit to each and every person that is uh, joining us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are we, we are looking at uh, Friday's lesson. This is Friday, January 11. There is no title on Friday's lesson in the uh, quarterlies. And that's not a bad thing, but we're going to give a title here. We're going to call it Council to Ephesus. And we're going to take a look one more time at the message to the, uh, the church in Ephesus. We're going to focus on the last part of the message where Christ gives his counsel of how they can come back to their first love that he says they have fallen away from. I'm going to read here Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God." That's actually verses 5 through 7. I got excited reading it, and I didn't stop, so that's okay. This is the last part uh, to the message here uh, to the church in Ephesus. We're going to focus mostly on verse number 5. Uh, there are three things that uh, Jesus, speaking through John, counsels the church in Ephesus to do in order to regain this first love, their love for Christ, that has waned uh, over the decades. And uh, we are going to see that these three um, steps in his counsel to them are very applicable to us today, not only personally, but uh, within our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, Jesus is giving this counsel to us today. That's right. So, um, yeah, let's let's begin here, uh, David, with just the first phrase in Revelation 2, verse 5, remember, hmm. therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Let's just take that first word, <laughs> How important is it to remember? And what do you think Jesus wants them to remember? Well, you know, it's interesting to know that this word remember, uh, it's almost like asking us to, to go back and exercise from memory. Take something from memory that you had probably forgotten, right? You already had, you knew about, but you've forgotten. So it's sort of telling you, rem go back into your memory lane of your mind and remember what you know. And where you are now, compare yourself to where you were and to where you are now. So, uh, you know, that's uh, interesting to know that that is um, um, uh, something that you might, 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 you know, find that in your experience or in your walk with God, not, not to remember the, the, the your, your failures, but to remember perhaps where you started when you were with God, your first connection with God, mm -hmm. you know, how that experience was. Uh, also, of course, we can connect this to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, you know, the, the, remember the Sabbath day. So it, it gives you back to that time where you were connected with God and your first experience. And oftentimes I hear people in church, you know, this is very, very often you hear people say, oh, you know, hearing when I was first converted, I was on fire for the Lord. I had that first love, as people say, you know, and I was doing this and preaching and I will give up, you know, cheese and I will leave, you know, all the things that, you know, I would hear something. I would I would take it and, you know, and do right away. And now sometimes they say that as a as a joke or as a bad thing, you know, uh, you know, but as a matter of fact, 
it there was nothing wrong about that. You know, the fact that they came to the, to, you know, you came to the experience of the Lord and you were so in love with God, you were delighted yourself, you delighted to do His will. That is the experience that Christ is saying, remember, that is what you need to redo again. And that's why it says the next thing is repent. That word repent in, in the Greek is mataneo, which means to think differently. You know, to reconsider. In other words, you can't continue to think the same, you know, as you're doing now. Uh, remember where you were and now think differently because the way you're thinking right now is messed up. What you're, the way you're, mm. you're in your life is wrong. You need to remember where you were, the experience you had with Christ, and now you have to think differently. Very important. Okay, now let's, mm-hmm. let's, sorry, yeah, it is. And let's apply this now to uh, our church today. I'm going to read a statement from Councils to the Church, page 359. And she writes here, and I'm quoting, In reviewing our past history, having traveled over every step of advance to our present standing, I can say, praise God. As I see what the Lord has wrought, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as leader. Now listen to this last sentence. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. Mm. End quote. This is powerful advice. Right. And it's the same advice that Christ gave to the church in Ephesus. He's giving, he has given it to our church today. Do not forget where we came from. And where did this church come from? Well, it came out of a study of prophecies. It is a prophetic movement. That is a label that uh, we proudly bore for decades and decades. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's uh, that flag is lowered a little bit today, uh, dealing with some of the events and the great disappointment. And, you know, was that a mistake and so forth? And we we are beginning sometimes to forget where we have come from. And when we forget where we've come from, we forget where we're headed. Absolutely. And so this is why Christ, yeah, this is why he begins with this word, remember. And, and you know, now, oh, I just wanted to just, if I mind, ahead, you don't know, mind, Tim, I was going to say that it, it's important that in that first uh, verse, you know, it's, it's, it's telling them to do the first works. And you mentioned this very importantly, you know, we need to go back to our first works, what our church received as, as, as a blessing, what, what this movement received as, as a gift of God. You know, he sent us the inspired words of, you know, writings of, you know, the, of the prophet. And it was not to just give us a list of things of what not to do or to do. It was for us to, to prepare us for the last, you know, message to be given by testimony, to be a living example of what, a, you know, what, what the world needed people that reflected Christ's character. So, you know, this he prepared a people to do a mighty work. But today we have neglected our history, our past. We have kind of turned back or, or back to what the Lord has given us as, by inspiration. And now we are really in a need of repentance. That's right. And you touched on the meaning of the word repent, which is the second step of advice Christ gives. Uh, Another inflection of what repent means is to literally turn around and head back uh, the way that you were coming from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to read another statement here from Steps to Christ, page 23. Repentance includes sorrow for sin and a turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness until we turn away from it in heart. There will be no real change in the life. And then uh, just a little bit later on that same page, she mentions that we should have a, quote, abhorrence of evil. This is what true repentance will bring us to. We will abhor, we will hate evil or iniquity. Now, if you were with us yesterday, we talked for a while about this uh, dichotomy between loving and hating and the character of God being a perfect balance between loving righteousness and hating iniquity. And this is what true repentance, the repentance that comes from God will do in our lives. It will turn us around. It will head us back toward the purpose and the mission that God has for us. And it will uh, create in us a love for righteousness and a hatred of iniquity. 
I need that personally in my life. Each one of us do, of course. We need it corporately as a church as well, because the church, of course, is made up of individuals. Exactly. And that's how we will be able to really accomplish the mission the Lord has for us by repenting, turning them back or changing our thinking, think differently. And not, you know, that doesn't mean think differently from the beginning is actually to think differently from what we're thinking today, you know, and to turn back to the first works. And, and this, of course, is the third step that, that Christ uh, wants the church in Ephesus to do here in verse five again. Um, repent and do those first works. Well, my question then would be, what are the first works, so to speak, that God had for this movement, the Advent movement of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? I'm going to read one more statement here. This is from Testimonies, Volume 9, page 19. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. End quote. Wow. I don't know about you, David, but I find that to be an incredibly challenging uh, challenge, an incredibly challenging statement. What does it mean that nothing else would absorb our attention than the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages? Well, Tim, that's a, that's a question that each of us have to ask ourselves. Uh, is it really me giving all, all my strength, all my mind to do God's will, to proclaim his character, to share with others the the warnings that are given, you know, to us, or is it really something, an afterthought, uh, something that I'm not willing to participate? Am I ashamed to really be, you know, calling, seeing like it is, or, or even, uh, you know, preaching about the end times events or about the judgment? You know, you know, there's, you know, what are really, really looking to, and, and that's, again, I believe that's the reason why the message is repent. We need to turn back. That's right. And I just want to uh, end with this challenge. We have just under two minutes left. Again, looking at that last uh, sentence in this statement from Testimonies, Volume 9, page 19. We are to allow nothing else to absorb our attention. You know, I don't know what that means uh, for you. Uh, if you're listening here, I don't know what that means for you in your life. And there's many days when I'm not sure what it means for me in my life. But here's what we need to be doing. We need to be seeking in prayer and Bible study every single day. Lord, what does it mean for me? What does it mean for my family? What does it mean for my local church to allow nothing else to absorb my attention other than this uh, proclamation, uh, this purpose that you've given to us? And you know what? It's going to mean something different for everybody. Uh, For some people, it will mean staying in where they live, staying with the job they have, Maybe with just a refocus, uh, you know, a, a clear vision of what they should be doing. For others, that may mean God may say, "Listen, I want you doing something different. I want you to move. I want you to uh, take up a totally new line of work." I don't know what that is going to mean for you. Nobody else does, but God does. And I can give you this promise that if you sincerely pray this prayer, Lord, show me what it means for me to allow nothing else to absorb my attention. He will show you. He will show your family. And when churches uh, begin praying this earnestly, God will show your church what he wants you doing in your community there. And uh, I look forward uh, to hearing how God is answering that prayer. Amen. Go to our website, pathwaytoparadise.org. Let us know when you get an answer. Let us know what God has shown you. And we can all be blessed from that. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a blessing to study God's Word as we dive deeper. And please join us tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. 
That's 855-447-8788. 